Today's lesson is on the reflex arc, which, if you are following in your textbook, is on page 134. And today we're going to look at how reflexes occur between a um, receptor and the spinal cord. So what exactly is a reflex arc? A reflex arc is the neural pathway followed by impulses from a receptor to an effector to bring about a reflex action. There are two kinds of reflexes. You have your somatic reflexes, and these refer to all of your skeletal muscles. In other words, these are the reflexes that would use your muscles and bones in order to incite a reaction. Whereas your autonomic reflexes are linked to all of your smooth or your cardiac muscle. Now the basic structure of a reflex arc is found on page 134 and this diagram is extremely important. I want you to NB star it put exam next to it because this will formulate some question in the final paper. Now if we look at the diagram there are five main components to a reflex arc in somatic reflexes. Remember these are the reflexes in your skeletal muscle and we always start with the receptor so that's going to be point one. The receptor then sends information to your sensory neuron which is point two and then it is interpreted and a decision and an action is made by step 3, which would be your interneuron. It's also known as your connector neuron in your textbook. From the connector neuron in the spinal cord, where an integrative decision has been made, that response is then sent to a motor neuron, which would be number 4. And a response would be carried out by an effector, which we would then label as number five, and an effector would be some kind of skeletal muscle. You will also note that below the diagram it mentions reflex centers, and there are two. There's your brain and your spinal cord. Your brain is responsible for reflexes such as sneezing, breathing, and blinking, whereas your spinal cord is linked to your primitive reflexes, like your knee-jerk reaction, or withdrawal from a painful stimulus. Now, looking at how does a simple reflex arc function, I'd like you to star that as well and make it in NB and for exam in your textbook. Those bullet points have clearly outlined how we start from the receptor, we move into the sensory neuron, our information reaches the central nervous system where it is interpreted. A dis an action is decided upon, which is passed on to a motor neuron. That motor neuron then is sent to an effector organ of some kind, like a skeletal muscle or even a gland, and an action is come about. Please, please make note of these bullet points. This is how you would structure your paragraph if you were asked to explain how a reflex arc functions. We then need to move on to the significance of reflex arcs, which is on page 135. The two main important reasons why we have reflex arcs is, firstly, we need to respond quickly. And we mustn't forget that the nervous system is ultimately responsible for maintaining homeostasis, keeping in mind that homeostasis is also linked to safety and preventing the body from harming itself. Which brings me to my second reason, it is there for a safety mechanism. And so these two go hand in hand with one another. If you can respond quickly, then you can save the body from further harm. Now there are a number of different kinds of reflexes mentioned to you, some examples in the textbook like sneezing, blinking, yawning and coughing and uh, it's really important to sit and go through how a simple uh, reflex function works. 
I encourage you to do the activity. Uh, the activity, which is activity 12, is very similar to what we would find in a test or an exam. And yet again, I, I encourage you to reach out to your teachers for any clarification for anything in this video today.